Baby Boom from 1987, directed by Charles Shire, written by Nancy Myers and Charles Shire, starring Diane Keaton, Sam Shepard, Harold Ramis. Uh, quick log line from IMDb, a life of super yuppie JC is thrown into turmoil when she inherits a baby from a distant relative. So I put this movie on, on the list. First of all, in 2020, amidst pandemic, mm -hmm. being in New York, kind of by myself, one of my really good buddies visited me and we went to Vermont for like a week in the peak fall season, which oh, was nice. kind of a just a highlight on its own. But, yeah. you know, having that experience and with a friend after months and months of isolation, being amidst all this, you know, fall foliage and beauty and all of it was just such an amazing experience that now in my real life, when I think about fall, I think about Vermont mm. and just how beautiful it was. Like I just had not seen colors like that, but it's sort of heightened because of what that trip meant and, you know, when it came and such. So, so this movie, a big chunk of it is in Vermont, which is why I always think of this movie. But I think on like a thematic level, it sort of, in my mind, picks up where the previous movie that I had on my list, All That Heaven Allows, mm -hmm. finishes, which is, okay, you have all these questions, reflections, life has taken turns the way it has, some that were in your control, some that weren't in your control, what are you going to do about it? You know, what action are you going to take? What lessons are you going to learn about yourself? Uh, and how are you going to reorient your life? And so that is very much a fall mindset uh, for me. And I think that's sort of what you see uh, during the course of the, this movie from what I think is a tour de force performance by Diane Keaton. Like she is so good in this movie. Uh, it's really her movie. Like the movie mm -hmm. is silly. If, you know, for many reasons that we may or may not get into, but it's a very entertaining watch for sure. Uh, but it's her movie, really. You mm -hmm. know, you see this heightened, very sort of uh, stereotypical depiction of, you know, career people, um, and especially career women uh, from the point of view of the time then. But frankly, even now, you know, there's some of that that's still relevant. And I think the movie is quite smart in that way. Like what is happening around you and what's been projected on you, but then also how much of that are you letting, how much of that are you letting get to you? And mm -hmm. I think this character is letting a lot of that get to her. And in some ways when this baby shows up and her life is just completely upended, uh, it's almost sort of a relearning of everything that matters to her. And she ends up starting her own small business. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way that business takes off and becomes like a thing, it's kind of funny and crazy. Like that would it's not a movie. happen. It's a movie. It's a movie. Yeah. But it's I movie. still, I love that scene when those people are in like some little, you know, store and they're like, oh, we'd love to buy the small batch thing. I laughed at that because... I'm definitely one of those people <laughs> show up to these like cutesy stores and yeah. some, like quaint little town. I was like, oh, handmade honey. Yes, right. I want some. <laughs> Meanwhile, the people are probably rolling their eyes. Like, yeah, here comes this dude from yeah, uh, God city. Knows where. Yeah. The city guy, yeah. exactly. So <laughs> I, I always, you know, laugh at that, but it's true. Um, and then I, I love the Sam Shepard and Diane Keaton connection. It's It's a very classic rom-com thing like for a little bit of the movie the movie becomes a rom-com mm -hmm. and you know nancy myers obviously is brilliant at that so there are no great kitchens the kitchen is frankly a bit of a mess here <laughs> uh, in this movie but i love that cottage uh would love to once it's done especially it's it's really really nice and uh would love to live there the movie ends on an interesting note like i think i would be very curious if this movie were made now how would this movie end? Um, in that time, it seems like the choice she makes is to not go back, which I think is the right choice. And by going back, I mean to the to the big city, to the big mm -hmm. corporate side of things, because you know they don't want her; they just want the business. Mm -hmm. And there's something to be said about her wanting to live her life on her own terms. But I'm I'd be very curious 
I mean, the movie sort of says a little bit that she's going back because she wants the guy as well and all of that. It doesn't have to be about that. You know, it could just be about, okay, I love what I'm doing. I want to build this. I could still live in the city and build my business, you know, for all you know, and staff up a team in Vermont to handle, you know, production, what have you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'd be curious to see how this movie takes shape if it were made today, but it's still a very entertaining watch to me and Vermont, fall, maple syrup, all the things (laughs) I like. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, you know, for me, again, I don't, keep saying I'm biased growing up in New England, but I still associate fall with all those, those things, the small town in Vermont. That's the place where you want to spend fall. I'm glad to hear you enjoyed your, your time in the, in Vermont. It's a beautiful state. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I'd I'd never seen this film before. Um, I, I I agree with you that like, it's definitely uh, Diane Keaton carries the picture. Like she, her performance, I thought is kind of, mainly what the movie was built around and yep. if that didn't really work or the actress couldn't really hold that the movie would be a l- kind of boring yeah. um you and know, I thought, silly and too. silly yeah yeah and silly i mean definitely the premise is you know funny like she is this very successful puts every her career above everything else uh woman um who then gets given a baby um and th- those scenes in the beginning were really funny too when she's holding yeah. the baby sort of like it's not even a doll. She's so at a less respect she with a doll. It's like funny. And, 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 and you know, it's not really, I mean, yeah, you could, if that was a real person doing that, I'd be like, oh my God, you're endangering this kid. But in the way that the movie plays it out, it's like, oh, it's, it's actually like pretty funny how yeah. that happens. And then it's just interesting seeing her. I mean, I, you know, was seeing this movie really about a tra- her transformation I thought was uh, pretty, I don't want to say the word powerful, but I, I like kind of connected a lot to this of like, okay, you're stuck in this, you know, environment where all you are is how much money you make. You're judging yourself by your worth, your quote unquote relationship with Harold Ramis. Like it was all just like a business deal. Totally. Um, she even got the kid. And then all she's doing immediately when she's still in New York is, okay, well, how do I, you know, she's this funny scenes where she takes the kid to like this class where they're trying to teach them <laughs> like German and Japanese. And it's like, your kid is like four or not even four months not or something. Four. Yeah. Like a, a young kid. And it's like, okay, well, there's, a, you know, the classic scene where they even make fun of movies today. Like the moms be like, wow, if I don't get them into the pre-K, they're not going to get into right. the kindergarten. They're not going to give it this and this and this. And all of a sudden now they're never going to, you know, get that successful job. So it's like the entire, even when she's seeing this baby, it's like, wow, this innocent kid that I just kind of got already, the system is sort of taking you over and turning you into a, just a cog in this giant capitalist wheel. I um, mean, instead she, you know, breaks three from that because of the baby. Right. But I think she always sort of wasn't happy, even in the beginning of this film, chasing yeah. this dream of uh, a successful career is a very hollow thing. Um, especially if you don't have anyone to share it with. And she right. now had this baby that she was going to share her life with. She had to. Um, so it's, it's, she sort of leaves, right. She quits all that behind, you know, seizes the means of production herself and goes into her own business. Now she owns her own business. She's no longer subservient to this board of directors, you know, all men, but you know, I didn't really, the gender thing to me wasn't really what this movie is touching on. I think it was more about just breaking free from uh, your boss and doing your own thing. And at the end of the movie, I thought it was really powerful. Yeah. She could have taken that check, right. Get, getting back her life. Now she, maybe Sam Shepard comes and joins her, whatever. But she says, no, I don't really, this isn't about the money to me. This is about the yeah. control over my own destiny. Mm-hmm. Like I own my business, giving this away to you guys. You would then own it. I'm not the owner. I, that, I that's what I want. It was her empowerment over owning her own destiny. And, you know, it was a movie in the eighties, which obviously was all about material, uh, material things. So there was owning your own destiny is owning your own business because right. everything had to be filtered through the lens of business in the eighties. Um, but I thought that was actually pretty, I was really like, powerful. wow, like she actually is telling her to go stuff it and going back to living. Like, you know, it doesn't really matter where she lives. It's like, no, this is my business. I'm going to do what I want with it. And even though you're offering me all this money, like I'm not even going to negotiate with you because I want to own my own thing. And I thought that was really right. cool. And the fact that having this child in her life sort of forced her to, to reevaluate everything and to live a happier life. I think in the end of the movie, she's a happier, happier person, even if Sam Shepard wasn't even there. Like, right. I like that rom-com part and they had good chemistry and things, but I was taking this more of her saying, I don't want to be a part of the machine anymore. I want to own my own destiny um, was what I thought was, I was not expecting that in this movie, honestly, especially a movie set in the eighties. Usually it's like the, the goal at the end is you make money or you she get that big deal. And then she'd be the CEO and all those people would work for her. And that's how she right. would quote unquote win. 
you know, that's usually what you find in these 80s movies. So I was pleasantly surprised, actually, that, you know, instead it was a, a sort of an anti-materialist uh, kind of, uh, or, or anti, like, uh, being uh, subservient to your boss. Anti-boss movie. She's her yeah. own boss. Um, <laughs> but, I, I, you know, I, I thought it was fine. Like, you know, a bit boring at times, but I think Dan King carried it through. And yeah. I, again, I was surprised by the ending, frankly. Um, and I would hope they would leave it the same today instead of trying to turn it into something where, like, she's again like hiring them all and they're all working for her and somehow that's the way she can win by yeah. turning into the the bad boss cuz they were bad bosses instead of not having people work for her um yeah now i agree um but i think to that point of like 80s successes about more money and such and she makes this different choice i think that's powerful a like you said but mm-hmm. b i think that's sort of where the gender of it all does matter a lot and I think that's sort of the subtle beauty of this movie and power of this movie is that it is a feminist movie, but it's not sort of being, you know, hammered up. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's just is. But I think the reason you get that surprise ending, I think it has a lot to do with her being a female, I think. Mm. Uh, and you can read into it however you want to. And I think that's very smart, actually. Yeah, I mean the the worry I would have if they made this movie today would that would be it turned into like a, you know, some sort of it'll it, become it, like, like a messagey sort of thing. Like the woman owns the board at the end, and like her again, her success is not any kind of personal um, self fulfillment or her now being a having being a mother, which really the movie wasn't necessarily about that no. as much as it was her breaking free. So she sort of is is again now she's in, in the same way in like a Working Girl. Oh, that was a movie we covered. Um, in the America episode, I think if yeah. people want to go back and listen to that, if you haven't seen it, you know, that, that ending of that film where like, you know, she quote unquote makes it, but she's just another cog in the wheel. And there's, that's what's it's a the, great comparison, the, yeah. you know, you know, like, and I would hope like that if that movie wanted to have an optimistic ending working girl, it would have been, you know, Tess sort of saying, no, I don't want to be just a worker in this, like what Diane Keaton did in this film. Um, so I think, you know, those movies, again, obviously they're trying to say something different to Working Girl, which I think right. is a better film. Um, so I'm not trying to compare the movies there, just saying like those endings were so different to me. One yeah. can be looked at as a positive, but a very dark ending at the same time, Working Girl. Whereas this one was a really optimistic thing. I thought it's like, wow, like she did learn and is much happier after getting this big shock to her system with a baby being given to her. Um, she's a much happier person, but it's not because of her, her job. It's I think it's because of the, the freedom that she has now. But The uh, freedom and control, yeah. Control, exactly. But it makes sense the two Tess and Diane Keaton's character would act the way they would because don't forget that Diane was at the top. You know, she's right, already that's true. gotten there mm-hmm. versus... Jess is like a nobody. She's just, you know, carving out her path from the, you know, grass root, literally. Mm-hmm. So maybe Tess does this. Right, right. That's 10 true. years from now. That's the hope that she That's would, uh, that she would do this to be a happier ending than turning into, you know, uh, the Sigourney Weaver character, Working Girl. Um, not to go back to, to that to that film, but uh, yeah, no, it, baby. They're movie, in like, dialogue with each other. They are actually. They kind of are. I think they came out like pretty, like within two or three years of one another. Probably, um, yeah. It, both touching on these, this again, this '80s theme of uh, you know material wealth and career and all that kind of stuff in interesting ways. So I'm, I'm glad I saw it. Um, thanks for putting it on the list. It was a good film. I'm glad you did. Pat at shoulders, rock. That's <laughs> that's right. <laughs> hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Karan and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.